you know about the Ukraine material now, and I guess China is the next chapter in that story. And based on what we're hearing, China could be possibly involving a lot more money. Some of this is inexplicable. Um, I, I, I'm sure he and son have a wonderful relationship. Nobody has a son that gets paid fifty thousand dollars a month in something which he has no experience, no background, and you don't discuss it. At what point does he answer these questions, or do you wait until the next debate in October? Uh, all attention right now is on Donald Trump, the beginnings of, of impeachment. That will now slow down as the evidence catches up with the conclusion. Mm. Not the way to run a government, but that's about to happen. Then the light is going to turn, and the light is going to turn during this debate on, is this who should be the nominee of the Democratic Party? What you just saw was the interview, amazing interview, with former Democratic Senator Torricelli of New Jersey. And I think it's amazing because we're now finding out exactly what the torch, as he's called, was talking about. He warned his party, you know, you nominate Biden, there's a lot of stuff coming with it. Now, what you're going to discover in the next few minutes is it's a lot more than Hunter Biden. We're going to talk about the Biden family corruption. People weren't giving Hunter Biden millions and millions of dollars because they thought he was clever. Nobody thought he was clever. They thought his last name was Biden. And as you're going to see, as we carry you through this story, this is actually a story not just of greed, not just of corruption. It's actually a story of a total collapse of patriotism, of a willingness to take money from Ukraine, Russia, China, in ways that are astonishing. And I'm going to start, just for a second, with one of the things I find personally the most amazing. You know, it turns out that the University of Pennsylvania, a great institution intellectually, took $70 million from the Chinese communists and, during that period, paid Joe Biden, $911,000. Now, it makes it even more amazing. We don't actually know all the sources of the money because the University of Pennsylvania has maintained secrecy even against the federal government's request. And we don't actually know what Joe Biden did to earn the money. But I think it's fair to say that on the first three years he was out of office, part of his income was directly from the Chinese communist. So that's just the tip of the iceberg, and it's the most obvious tip of the iceberg. But we're gonna explore much more than that. No, in, in retrospect, look, I, I, I think that it was poor judgment on my part. We have a lot of bad judgment in my family. We went through eight years without one hint of scandal. My son's business dealings were not anything where everybody that he's talking about, not even remotely, number one. So all of this really broke loose because of the laptop that was discovered in Delaware that the New York Post really broke the story on. But in a way, that distorted the story because it made it very Hunter-focused and very Ukraine-focused. The fact is, I think, that Ukraine is the smallest part of the money, that the really big money was in China. And in between China and Ukraine, there was Russia. We know, for example, that on one occasion, the richest woman in Russia sent by wire three and a half million dollars to Hunter Biden. This is confirmed by the Treasury, which tracks these kind of large amounts when they're wire transferred. Now, you might say to yourself, how can Hunter Biden go around the planet collecting all this money? And I would argue that the answer is not that Hunter Biden was brilliant, not that Hunter Biden was a great salesman, but rather that Hunter Biden kept selling one thing, access to his father. I, I don't think that there's a lot of things that would have happened in my life that, uh, that if my last name wasn't Biden. Hunter networks with the Chinese uh, financial giants, representing some Chinese state-owned enterprises. And it's important to remember when we talk about China, China is 
the Chinese Communist Party. There's no company in China that doesn't report to the Chinese Communist Party. There's no billionaire in China who isn't ultimately afraid of the Chinese dictatorship. And so if something's happening, you know that at the political center in Beijing, they're approving it or it wouldn't be happening. So Hunter goes back and forth. And uh, while Hunter was being protected by the Secret Service, he scheduled nearly 70 trips to foreign countries. Six of them were to China. In 2011, in April, he's in Beijing. Meanwhile, Joe Biden is going around the world and Joe Biden gives a speech at the opening session of the U.S.-China Strategic and Economic Dialogue. There was a debate here in the United States and quite frankly throughout most of the West as whether a rising China was in the interest of the United States and the wider world. As a young member of the Foreign Relations Committee, I wrote and I said, and I believe then what I believe now, that a rising China is a positive, positive development, not only for China, but for America and the world writ large. Then he goes on a few months later and gives another speech at Sichuan University. Again, get a flavor for how pro-Chinese Biden is, how much he's pandering. This is the vice president of the United States. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. I believed in 1979 and said so, and I believe now that a rising China is a positive development, not only for the people of China, but for the United States and the world as a whole. And in September, Biden writes a New York Times op-ed entitled, China's Rise Isn't Our Demise. Wonderful words to the Chinese party dictatorship which is desperately trying to grow into being our replacement without having us get too angry at them. And so Biden, in a sense, is the perfect tool for that. Meanwhile, in November of 2013, Hunter Biden's company, Rosemont Seneca Partners, merges with the Chinese government-linked Bohai Capital and creates Bohai Harvest RST. This number is going to shock you. It shocked me the first time. I didn't believe it the first time I saw it. A billion dollar private investment fund. Now ask yourself, what are the odds that Hunter Biden had a clue about how to run a billion dollar investment fund? You know he didn't. And you know what that meant. It meant that if his name had been Hunter Jones, he wouldn't have gotten the money. But because his name was Hunter Biden, they suddenly said, oh, please come in. We'd like to take care of you. By the way, we really like your father. Now, at one point, an ABC reporter, what you're going to see in a clip, ask him and watch what Hunter says and ask yourself, I mean, is this just a family trait to not tell the truth? That Hunter flew on Air Force Two with his father during an official government trip to China in 2013, leveraging that connection for financial gain in an investment deal with Chinese businessman Jonathan Lee. I, Have you received any money from no, that business dealing? No. At all? Not no, one cent? Not one cent. Then in December 2014, they invest in a state-owned energy company, China General Nuclear Power. That company was charged by the U.S. Department of Justice with conspiracy to unlawfully engage and participate in the production and development of special nuclear material outside the United States, which could cause significant damage to our national security. Later on, the U.S. Defense Department says it is a communist Chinese military company. And you might say to yourself, gee, why would a Chinese military company want to have a close relationship with the vice president's son. Almost answers itself, doesn't it? September 2015, BHR and Chinese state-owned Avic Automotive Systems Holding Company teamed up to buy Michigan-based auto parts maker Hennigus Automotive Inc. The Obama administration, or should I say the Obama-Biden administration, approves the 51% acquisition, even though that Chinese company had been sanctioned by the U.S. government five times. One of AVIC's subsidiaries had been blacklisted 15 months earlier by the U.S. government for its Chinese military ties, 
It was later identified by the U.S. Department of Defense as being a communist Chinese military company. Uh, what bigger appearance of a conflict of issue can you have but to put Hunter Biden on Air Force to fly over on an official trip of the vice president and shake them down for a business relationship that, at least in discussion, was $1.5 billion in size. Um, the audacity of this, it, it, it sort of rivals what the Clintons did with the Clinton Foundation. Uh, the difference there is the Clinton Foundation was allegedly a charity, and so most of the money went to charitable causes, uh, at least by design. Here, it's going into the back pocket of, of Hunter Biden and the family members, and it wasn't a secret. It, I've interviewed a lot of officials in these companies, uh, countries, Ukraine, Russia, China, over the last six months, and their whole idea was, well, well we thought, this is what they've told me, we thought the Bidens were just pretty clear. It was a pay-to-play relationship. If you wanted Joe to be friendly, you greased the palm of Hunter Biden. And that's the impression we left in these countries. Uh, imagine what we should be thinking about in, in the greatest country of all America, that that's what our elected leaders were doing during that time frame. This is why President Trump ultimately ends up in Michigan, pointing out that the Biden family had actually shipped jobs from Michigan to China. Joe Biden devoted his career to offshoring Michigan's jobs, outsourcing. <laughs> Out at, sorry, we shouldn't be smiling about it, but we've changed it around. Outsourcing Michigan's factories, throwing open your borders, dragging us into endless foreign wars and surrendering our children's future to China and other faraway lands. So. Around the same time they were closing deals that benefited Communist China, and they were threatening U.S. national security, Hunter's business associates were trying to figure out how could they really leverage the Biden name. I wanted to focus on the other currency we are bringing to the table, direct administration pipeline. In other words, the other currency is Vice President Joe Biden. And here's, here's some of the stuff in their pitch. The global network of the management team, led by Archer and Biden, have created an unprecedented opportunity for a firm at our scale. Capital outflow, China to the U.S., and former Chinese Communist Party to the U.S. Cross-border deal flow, China, Latum Credit, former CCP Energy, Israel Technology. Now, the laptop, when it was uncovered, starts giving us more and more details and the hard drive reportedly belonging to Hunter that was left at a repair shop in Delaware, and everybody's now verified this was his laptop. There's no question about this. All that Russian disinformation stuff is a baloney. This was Hunter Biden's laptop. Uh, what's happened is uh, the Democrats were desperate, so they pulled out the same thing they used on Trump in 16, 17, 18, 19, and early 20, and here's our old friend, the totally dishonest, Adam Schiff, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee on CNN. Well, we know that this whole uh, smear on Joe Biden uh, comes from the Kremlin. Uh, that's been clear for well over a year now that they've been pushing this uh, false narrative about the vice president and his son. But this time we know a lot more about how these guys lie. And so almost immediately, the director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, set the record straight. It's funny that uh, some of the people that complain the most about uh, intelligence being politicized are the ones politicizing intelligence. And unfortunately, in this case, uh, it is Adam Schiff, the chairman of the House Intelligence uh, Committee, who, uh, as you pointed out on Friday, said that the intelligence community believes that Hunter Biden's laptop and the emails on it are, are part of some Russian disinformation campaign. Let me be clear. The intelligence community doesn't believe that uh, because there's no intelligence that supports that. And we have shared no intelligence with Chairman Schiff or any other member of Congress that Hunter Biden's laptop is part of some Russian disinformation campaign. It's simply not true. Now, the emails released by the New York Post gave us even more details about the Biden's business ventures in communist China. May 2017, an email was received by Hunter Biden that discussed remuneration packages and equity distribution. One of my favorite parts of the emails that the New York Post uncovered was in May of 2017, Hunter Biden gets this note about packages of compensation and equity distribution. And depending on the agreement with, with Hunter, the equity will be distributed as follows. And the, the last one is 10 held by H for the big guy. 
and you have to say, gee, I wonder who the big guy is. And you know, it's, it's the vice president. Tony Bobulinski, who was a remarkable person in his own right, both his grandfather and his father served the country. He served the country in the U.S. Navy. And he got so upset about this whole thing that uh, he went out and, first of all, validated the email that was in the New York Post. He said that email is genuine. On May 13, 2017, I received an email concerning allocation of equity, which says 10% held by H for the big guy. In that email, there's no question that H stands for Hunter, big guy for his father, Joe Biden, and Jim for Jim Biden. In fact, Hunter often referred to his father as the big guy or my chairman. On numerous occasions, it was made clear to me that Joe Biden's involvement was not to be mentioned in writing, but only face to face. In fact, I was advised by Gillier and Walker that Hunter and Jim Biden were paranoid about keeping Joe Biden's involvement secret. Now, here's a guy who, naval officer, hardworking entrepreneur, personal witness, who's come out of the woodwork and said, all this stuff's really true. It really involves Vice President Biden himself, and it really involved a deep relationship with the Chinese who were, quote, this is what he says about the Chinese. They were looking at this as a political or influence investment. Now, China is a tough league. Ye Jianming is the founder of CEFC China Energy Company Limited and chairman of the board of its subsidiary, China Energy Fund Committee. Ye has extensive ties to China's communist government and previous affiliation with China's military. August 2017, an email from Hunter Biden to Guang Wendong, who reportedly conducted transactions for his company. Hunter Biden, quote, my understanding is that the original agreement with the director was for consulting fees based on introductions alone, a rate of $10 million per year for a three-year guarantee total of $30 million. Let me be clear here. What Hunter Biden is offering is if I introduce you to people, you give me $10 million a year for a minimum of three years. It's, quote, the chairman changed that deal after we met in Miami to a much more lasting and lucrative arrangement. I have to tell you, if I could get $10 million a year for three years, I don't know that I'd need a much more lasting and lucrative arrangement, but I don't have the appetite the Bidens have. Quote, this proposal by the chairman was so much more interesting to me and my family. August 2017, there's a photo of a sketched Hudson West flowchart. According to the Senate report, quote, the Hudson West entities are important entities in the flow of funds among and between Yi, Gong Wen, and Hunter Biden and his associates. August 8th, 2017, $5 million wired from CEFC infrastructure investment to Hudson West 3 bank account. Same day, August 8th, up to September 25th, $4,790,375.25 in payments were sent from Hudson West 3 to Owasco, which is Hunter Biden's personal firm, for, quote, consulting fees. Makes you wonder exactly what he was consulting on. But James Biden's consulting group, the Lions Hall group, was also involved. So James Hall is Hunter's uncle and Vice President Biden's brother. Um, August 14th to 19, 2017 to August 3rd, 2018, Owasco sent 20 wires to the Lion Hall group, totaling 1,398,999. That's from Hunter Biden's firm to his uncle's firm. Instead, I found out from Senator Johnson's September report that the $5 million was sent in August 2017 to entities affiliated with Hunter. 2017, Hunter and Guang Wendong opened a bank account to finance a $101,291 global spending spree. $101,000 should get you a pretty good spending spree. They purchased airline tickets, items at Apple, pharmacies, hotels, restaurants. Then from January 20, 2018 
to October 2018, Hudson West Third sent payments totaling $76,746 to Lion Hall Group for office expense and reimbursement. Now, that's the Chinese deal. Meanwhile, coming down the road is Burisma in Ukraine. Remember that Ukraine had a very corrupt environment and that Burisma was considered one of the most corrupt companies in all of Ukraine. So April 13th, 2014, there's an email from Biden to Hunter Biden, to Archer, outlining his, quote, thoughts and organization. Quote, the announcement of my guy's upcoming travels, my guy's presumably is the vice president, should be characterized as part of our advice and thinking. But what he will say and do is out of our hands. This could be the break we have been looking for. They are really smart enough to understand our long-term value. If they're looking to just use us until the storm passes, then we risk far too much for far too little. In other words, Hunter wanted, Hunter Biden wanted Burisma and the Ukrainians to believe that he was orchestrating his father's activities in order to have a long-term contract uh, in a way that would really work. That's April 13th. Three days later, April 16th, Vice President Biden meets with Devin Archer at the White House. Then on April 22nd, Devin Archer joins the Burisma board. Again, you report back to your good friends in Ukraine, oh, I was just at the White House with the vice president, but you don't really need me. And they suddenly go, oh, we do need you. Why don't you join the board? Then media reports have said that Hunter also joined the board in April. But Burisma did not issue a press release announcing Hunter joining the board until May 12, 2014. Biden was paid as much as, Hunter Biden, was paid as much as $50,000 per month for his role in Burisma's board. Biden and Archer together were paid more than $4 million for their board membership. Now, this is Ukraine. This doesn't count all the money they're already getting out of China. But they've now added another country, another flow of cash, another opportunity to enrich themselves. And just as Hunter had no understanding of investments with the Chinese billion dollars. He has no understanding of the natural gas companies involved in. This is all just influence peddling. So on April 22nd, 2014, the vice president addressed the Ukrainian legislators in Kiev discussing Russia's moves in the Crimea. After the visit, Biden is the public face of the administration's handling of Ukraine. So here's Hunter Biden with his father clearly defined by Obama as the public face of the administration in dealing with Ukraine. Now, how much do you think that's worth in prestige and in access? On May 12th, 2014, an email came from Vadim Pozharsky to Biden and Archer, quote, we urgently need your advice on how you could use your influence to convey a message, signal, et cetera, to stop what we consider to be politically motivated actions. You begin to understand why they're so valuable. They want to use your influence to convey a message or a signal to stop their being investigated. Early 2015, George Kent stated in a testimony, and he was a State Department official, he raised concerns about Biden's Burisma board membership to Joe Biden's national security staff. In early 2015, I raised questions with the Deputy Prosecutor General about why the investigation of Mr. Zlochewski had been terminated, based on our belief that prosecutors had accepted bribes to close the case. Later, I became aware that Hunter Biden was on the board of Burisma. Soon after that, in a briefing call with the National Security Staff of the Office of the Vice President in February of 2015, I raised my concern that Hunter Biden's status as a board member could create the perception of a conflict of interests. So in other words, the people who work directly for the vice president are being told by a State Department professional that he is really worried about Biden's Burisma board. Now, Joe Biden would have you believe either that his national security staff never told him that he's forgotten it or what? This is a statement, again, from a State Department professional. On April 17th, 2015, there's an email from a Burisma executive thanking him for meeting with Joe Biden. Dear Hunter, thank you for inviting me to DC and giving an opportunity to meet your father 
and spend some time together. It's really an honor and pleasure. They will tell you that they can't find this meeting in the, quote, official schedule. Now, that leads to two possibilities. There was no meeting, or the meeting was deliberately off schedule, so it didn't show up. So the Senate report found that in October of 2015, a senior State Department official expressed his concerns with Hunter's board membership to Vice President Biden and with Hunter. Biden, of course, as you'll hear from the NPR quote, uh, denies all of this. You know it didn't look good for Hunter Biden to be on that board, even if he did nothing wrong. The optics weren't good. And you talk a lot about what it means to be a Biden and the integrity that is imbued in that family name. But there were former White House aides of yours who tried to warn you about the potential conflicts of interest. Nobody warned me about a potential conflict of interest. Nobody warned me about that. And at the same time, this George was Kent, done. the State Department official, yeah, but, testified that but, he raised it to you. No, he and your didn't staff, say to your me. Staff, he did not to your say, staff. I, I stand never, corrected. Never heard that once. To at your all. staff, and your staff and, told him he has no bandwidth. March 2016, Biden visits the Ukraine, threatening to withhold a billion dollars in loan guarantees unless the prosecutors asked it. And the vice president would have to have known by that point that Hunter was on the board of Burisma. Did Vice President Biden know of his son's role in Burisma when he told Ukraine to fire the prosecutor? Um, at that point, uh, yes, he would have known. Uh, because it had been reported in the press and uh, one of his aides had uh, mentioned it to him uh, just to kind of give him a heads up that he might be asked questions. Finally, on April 2019, Hunter Biden ceased serving on Brisbane's board. Remember, that's several million dollars later. Why did you leave the board in April? It's a five-year term. And you chose yeah, not to I chose continue. not to. Yeah. Why? I think it's pretty obvious why. Now, let's leave Ukraine and go to Russia. Uh, the richest woman in Russia. This Yelena Batorina, her husband had been mayor of Moscow, um, was uh, ousted from office for being corrupt. If you think about this, you're so corrupt in Russia that they kick you out of office. It's on a grand scale. He, he sadly died, so she's now the richest woman in Russia. February 14, 2014. She wires $3.5 million dollars to a Rosemont Seneca Thornton bank account for, quote, a consultancy agreement. This is one of the things I always like about Vice President Biden. I have two daughters. They do pretty well. But if one of them walked in and said, hi, I just got $3.5 million wired to me this morning. I'd pay attention. I'd think, that's pretty cool. How did that happen? Now, either Hunter would never tell his dad any of these things, or... Joe Biden in every single event this year has been lying. And I'll let you decide as this goes on. I don't discuss business with my son because I don't want to have any knowledge of any. I don't want to be accused of, well, you talk with your son or you talk with your whomever. On August 21st, 2014, board minutes that were obtained from an FBI investigation of Devin Archer found that Yelena Baterina had invested more than $200 million. Now, I went around for weeks thinking, wow. 3.5 million is a pretty good deal. No, it turned out she'd actually sent $200 million to be invested. So you have the Chinese over here sending a billion dollars to be invested. You have a Russian over here sending $200 million to be invested. They don't have three hands. And so you have the Ukrainians here just giving them cash. So you take all of that money and put it together. And you have to say to yourself, could that much money have been sloshing around and Vice President Biden never noticed it? Could his son have gone on a huge round the world trip that cost $100,000 and he never noticed it? Um, it all simply is obviously not true. He did know. In fact, he must have known that his name was being used. He must have known that his schedule was being used. He must have known when, you know, Hunter flies to China on Air Force Two with his father. Now, that's a long trip. You think they never once sat down and said, you know, let's have a cup of coffee and talk about how business is going. And then he makes all these deals with the Chinese. 
And as I said earlier, the Chinese give $70 million to the University of Pennsylvania, where Joe Biden happens to be at the Biden Institute and happens to be picking up 900 grand. This is a family that has consistently exploited the family name, the public trust. And what's really sobering is they've done it with the Russians, the Ukrainians, and the Chinese. And the idea that somebody this dishonest and this willing to accept money from Chinese communists might be president, I think, is very sobering. And my impression is that there are thousands and thousands of emails out there, that there are more witnesses out there, and that in the next 10 days, we're going to learn even more about the Biden family corruption. And when we do, we'll follow up with another report to give you a sense of what's going on.